Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In case this is your first time of joining me, my name is Profit and I'm a life and relationship coach. Yes, I help people build intentional relationship that leads to a successful marriage. But in today's video, remember that this channel is all about relationship and also me telling you about my college experience. So today we'll be talking about a little bit about my college experience. So today we'll be discussing culture shock. We're discussing about the things that have shook me in this country called the United States of America. Well, it's very interesting though. Know? So when you kind of leave a particular part of your existence, I don't know why I'm using that word, but then something you have been very, very used to and you're coming over to somewhere else, you're not so used to what they do here, but then it's like a shock. So, we'll be looking at some of them, and then I hope you enjoyed this video. So, let's get into it. So, I've been experiencing a lot of new things here, and wow. It's been amazing. Some of them have been very good, while some, man, it takes time to get used to. It takes time to get used to. So I will start with my favorites. <laughs> and what is my favorites? Number one, there is no mama and kichi to buy things from in the streets. And you're on the streets, anyway, what to put it. Like, you know, normally, like, as a Nigerian, there's always all this small, small shop around your house, Mankechi, Mogi, all those places they sell Akara, bread, you know, all those stuff in Nigeria. Here, there's nothing like that. <laughs> what this means exactly is that um, in case you are cooking and you run out of pepper, there is no rushing down to the next shop by your side, by the side of your house to go and buy pepper. You have to either drive or enter the bus to the mall and go and buy pepper. So just imagine leaving your house, maybe you're cooking rice or stew or soup, and just give up that I don't have pepper. What will you do? <laughs> well, for me, it happened to be actually worse though, because I went to the market, I bought everything, and I forgot I don't buy pepper. So, how did I survive? I think the first time I cooked without pepper. The second time, I think, yeah, my flatmates they had pepper, but I took it. I don't tell them <laughs> because they were not around my apartment mate. I took the pepper, I don't tell them. But later, I had to go to the mall to get my own pepper because it's this is serious. It's very very serious. You don't understand until you run out of something that you don't. There's nobody you can borrow from because everybody here. It's part of what I will tell you because everybody here. Ah, they act strange in a way. So that's the first thing. To buy anything, you have to buy it in the mall. That means every month or every week, you have to have like a budget of things you need to cook, what you need to cook them with, and ensure you have everything before you start cooking. So that's the first thing. <laughs> so the second thing also as it relates to this mall stuff is that when you go to the mall, like yes, we know shop rights in Nigeria or spas, anywhere you go to. When you go there, you go around, shop, buy your things. Then when you come out and you want to go, you have to queue to check out the cashiers who kind of check you out and everything. Yes, they do it here sometimes. They do it here in some malls too, but then a big, like a large quantity of them, or a large number of them, you check yourself out. This means that after getting all you need to get, you carry yourself and your plenty property that you bought, your groceries, take it to a particular session where you scan all of them, you then pay for them and you go. In Nigeria, when you pay, even after paying all the pain you will pay and uh, they're checking you out and everything, when you come at the exit of the mall, the security there will still check the paper you have to ensure that it's actually what you have that is in the bag or something like that and they will tear it and or something like that but this one, this one nobody's checking you you check yourself out pay for everything then you walk to the door 
and you go home. Nobody is checking you. But personally, I think, yeah, they have cameras. I don't know how they do it, but I personally think they have cameras everywhere. And probably if you try to steal something, it might indicate. I don't know how they move or I don't know the technology they use behind it, but I feel like there should be a security measure they use. You get what I'm saying? But then you have to check yourself out. Yeah, so that's the next thing. Another thing related to this one is the use of coin. Oh my god. I know I've gone to a couple of, of their malls and after buying something, when I decided to like make payments, I decided to pay with cash. And when you give them cash, they will count everything. And you know what's about American market is that they always do $5.59, $3.99, $80.53. Like it gets me. I was like, I'm building. Why not just make it $7? Why do you have to do it $6.99? Make it $7 for God's sake. <laughs> make it $7. Don't because most I don't, once I come to the market, I don't look at those cents. What I do is, once I see $7.99, in my mind, I wrote to myself, it's $8. So people should stop trying to do that manipulation on my head. Eh? So, but when you now finish, I now give them cash. They will now come and give you coin. And for me, I don't even count the coin. That's the thing. I don't know how to count the coin. I know they have quarter. I know how they have time. I know they have cents. I think there's another one. So sometimes I don't even like it was just like I started checking. Look, see how many dime make one cent, how many quarter make one cent, how many cents, how many cents make one dollar. So many of them, like so maybe when I buy something, two dollars fifty-three cents, and they give me a coin. I just look at it, I put it inside my bag. I'm not counting it, but I don't know how to count it. I'll make mistake. <laughs> Sometimes it kind of stresses me out, though. but then it is what it is. The good part of it is that sometimes this coin you can use it to wash clothes. That's another thing because here they don't do wash and wash and spread in the in, in the sun like you normally do in Nigeria, where you wash clothes, wash, 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 wash. After you are done washing, and rinse it. After rinsing it, now find room and spread the clothes. Then, my, I don't know about other areas in America though, but where I am living, there's something like that. You have to wash with the machine and dry with the machine. And what's about their public building is if it's not your private house or maybe a private house you rented, like the whole house and everything, there is always a central washing machine. And the funny thing about this is that you pay to, to wash your clothes. So I think the washing is around $1.50. And the drying is around just one dollar. So you pack all your clothes in the washing machine, and the machine, I think it washes it very well. After washing it, you bring it out, put it in the dryer, it does its own job, and you bring it out and you take it to your room. You, you, so you can actually wash your clothes and dry it in two hours. And wait, and <laughs> what? You get what I'm saying? But then, that's, I think that's where the coin comes into play because. Um, you can use it to wash those clothes, but then you need it to be important to use it. So you can't use cents, you can you have to use quarter. Um, this is the version of quarter. <laughs> so that is that. So another one is that that you are in the same class with somebody doesn't mean that you are friends. Hmm. You can see somebody today, you will greet yourself very well, chat, or maybe just talk in class. Tomorrow they will see you and walk past you. They are not beefing you. <laughs> they are not beefing you. It is just the way they are. Like, I, I experienced one though, like where I work, um, in the workshop where I work. I met this guy the first day when the, the instructor was showing us stuff, showing us how to do stuff in the office and the workshop. Then, after chatting with the guy and everything, the next day, I saw the guy on the road. I was trying to wave at this young man. At least somebody you saw yesterday now, at least family, people are familiar in the room. Ah, or I think is it wave? I think he, he he I was coming and he came by the side that like you know that moment you cut in front of somebody. And you know that moment when you cut him, be like, hey, what's up? Brother was just walking straight. He he acted like he not see me. Eh? I was like, what? Is this how it is? I think I've I've had it before, but I've never really experienced it. So <laughs> That's another one. Let me be rushing though, because this video will be long if I keep explaining these things to you guys. So the next point is the professors asking you to call them by their first name. Man, 
even up to date, I struggle to call them by, by name. I try, I, I, as much as possible, I just talk and not call the person by their name. It's strange, really strange. You know that moment when you have to call Mr. This, Mr. That, Taito, Professor This, um, Architect This, Lawyer This, Barrister This, all those title, title attached to names in Nigeria. Hmm. Here. Yeah. They don't mind though, they don't, I don't know whether they like it, I, I, I don't know. But like what I've seen, they prefer you calling them by their first name. Spencer, George, Andrew. Like, hey, you just be talking in class. Say, hey, Andrew. <laughs> hey, Jesus. If you try this in Nigeria, if you try this in Nigeria, <laughs> the kind of AMOF that will be waiting for you. <laughs> Don't try this at, at home. This one is what, what they tell you. Don't try this at home. Don't try it in Nigeria. <laughs> but here, they don't see it as anything. They prefer calling them by their first name. And the way they will talk to you, like, hmm. The experience is just so different. They'll talk to you like very bad, like colleagues, and not even all these lecturers, students, stuff. The way they relate with you, the gist. Like the first time I had a conversation with my graduate coordinator or something like that, we were talking. Me, I was even scared in the way talking to him, the way we were talking, like, he was like, not that moment of you are so chill, chill, they call it chip chat or something like that. But then, this young man here, I was just being careful so that I will not overstep my boundaries before somebody will change it for me. Ha. It's something new to me. The next point, in fact, this one should even be the first point. The dress code. My God. <laughs> I was shocked beyond my bones. I'm even, I'm even still shocked till date. You know the moment when in Nigeria, I remember you in Zik, when they normally put um, some posters in the front of the gates where they say, don't wear this thing to school, don't wear this one to school. Even when you are passing the gates, and probably you will wear something short, the way the security from the gates will turn you back and everything. Hmm. In Nigeria, we are trying, you know, we are really trying. Because what they wear to school is shocking. You know what, when you say somebody is wearing bomb shots to school like I don't know how to describe this bomb shot I'm telling you about like bomb shots that is bomb shots very very short bomb shots <laughs> let me put it that way very very short bomb shots that's what this guy this their lady is wearing to school like maybe, like the funny part of it is that they will wear big sweater on top and then they will now wear the bomb shot some of them will wear now wear one big blue like that and still wear the bomb shot if you're walking on the road like this, be like Jesus, Holy Spirit, I cover my eyes with the blood of Jesus. Let me not see something that will make me fall into the blood of <laughs> This is crazy, guys. It's really crazy. The dress code here. Yeah. Some will wear their pajamas to school. Some will wear different things to school. It's I know here it's like a culture for them. They don't see it as any problem. They, it's normal to them. But then, coming from where I'm coming from, my Nigeria, mm, man, it's like a taboo. <laughs> Is a taboo. It's an abomination. <laughs> but then it is what it is. Oh, seriously, like the guys, mostly all the time they wear short knickers. It's just few persons that you see wear trousers and everything. But mainly a lot of them do wear short knickers to school. In Nigeria, we dress like we are going to party or we want to go to school. Like you wear your jeans, your car, wear your shirts, your polo. Fall inside class and you're feeling bouncing, big boy, and all those stuff. Here, wear your polo, wear your shoe, wear your knicker, carry your school bag, ride your bicycle, or drive your car because a lot of them have cars. Drive your car to school and do your lectures and go back home. Nobody is doing big boy by, by addressing here. No big boy by addressing. So, my right dear, it's crazy. Very, very crazy. <sighs> Man. <laughs> The next one is um, how they hold the door. Like, I feel this one is very, very nice, actually. It's very nice. So, most times when you are going through a door, you just hold, when you're going through, you open the door and you have to, if someone is coming behind you, you just hold the door till the person comes and holds the door too. So, it's, it's like a nice thing. So, because some, the doors they use here kind of, once you open it, it closes on its own and just kind of door. So, if you open it and you leave it, it's nice bang on someone or something like that. I'm not saying probably that's the reason, but then I feel like it's a good thing when you open the door, you hold it for someone else to they come closer. Probably mostly when they are close, like they're very close to you. Maybe they're like a bit away, 
can actually leave the door to put on it. But so it's actually a great one. In Nigeria, is there door to hold? I don't know. Even if there is door to hold, who hold the door? <laughs> so, but it's fine. It's it's okay. It's okay. It's well. So the next point is how they don't usually answer to greetings. You know that moment you see your elderly, you know, elderly, elderly person and you are greeting good morning, good afternoon, good night and the rest. I, I don't think they really answer to greetings that much. It's not personal, that's the thing. I think it's not personal because I've experienced it. It's not really personal. Some few have answered to you, they have responded to the greeting. But some, they don't really respond to greeting that much. They will just prefer saying hello, hello. Especially those who like their people who work in their offices and everything. Once they're just stepping inside the office, they'll just say hello. Hello, and those kind of stuff. So I don't think they really do very well when it comes to greeting. And they don't even mind whether you greet them or not. They don't care. No matter how old the person is, they don't care. But in my country, Nigeria, if you don't greet an elderly person, you're in trouble. Because they will remind you that they are 15 years older than you, 30 years older than you, 20 years older than you. Even if you don't greet somebody that is just two years older than you, it's a problem. But then, good and fine. It's a good thing to greet your elders. It's a good thing to read. My culture is wonderful. Nigeria is wonderful. That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to see. My country is there. I'm just sharing with you guys what I have experienced here and how they see it. What I'm telling you is that my country is also wonderful. Nigeria is also we greet our elders. We respect our elders. It's important to respect our elders. But here, they don't mind. Good and fine. So me, I still some, sometimes when I see people them because some of you could not respond and maybe just say hello hello jeremy hello frank all those kind of stuff so yes <laughs> okay so i have a lot of points to go so but we'll stop here for this one there's a part two to this video and so if you are enjoying this video ensure you comment you like you share you subscribe to my channel and after you do all this stuff and all those stuff and all these things when you finish doing all these things i mentioned previously then you can go ahead to watch the number two part the part two of this video i will put the link to the description in the description of this video remember subscribe subscribe and then rush to the part two of this video see you guys